Hi friends, welcome to Code Chana, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how to configure Postgres SQL for Flask. In our last video, we created database using Flask SQL Alchemy. Now, to keep things simple, we used, let me just open the init file. So we used SQL Lite. It's a beginner database. It doesn't hold that many tables and it is not that versatile, but it is great for beginners because it is really simple. However, if you want to create a website that is scalable and has a good database, then you must switch to Postgres. All right, so in this video, we are going to configure Postgres for Flask. So let's do this. So I'm going to stop my server. All right, and then first of all, we need to just install Postgres if we don't have. So pip install and then Postgres. All right, so that's all we need to do. Now make sure that you are inside your virtual environment. If you're not, then you need to do venv scripts and then activate. Since I'm already there, I'm just going to do pip install and then Postgres. So it will install this package so we don't need to change much here now let me show you how the structure of postgres database looks i'm just going to copy this line all right so press alt shift and then down arrow to copy it now the above one is for sqlite now for postgres it is going to be like this so postgres sql and colon and then just double slashes and after that we need a username colon and then the password and after that we need the host name so host name in our case it is going to be local host and after that we need the port number so port for postgres is 5432 now after this we are going to need the database name so here database name now we do not need dot db as you can see in the sqlite version so i'm just going to comment out line 6 for sqlite all right also we do not need this cjflask.db so i'm going to delete this great so we currently do not have any databases in our app as of now so since we are starting fresh with postgres sql you need to understand few things so first of all if you are installing postgres sql and you do not have that installed in windows machine then you need to install it first so you can do that from postgres website now for simplicity you just need to install pg admin and it will install Postgres and also the GUI or graphical user interface tool for managing Postgres database and server. All right, so now click on this download button and then we need to install the PG admin for software for Windows. And you need to click on this latest version, PG admin 4 version 4.26. Now I already have it installed, so I'm going to open it. So press Windows E to access the Windows Explorer and then click on downloads and there you will have your PG admin for setup. Now again I already have this installed in my system so press Windows and then PG admin 4. As you can see I also have it in my recently added software so click on it and it will start as you can see here it will start the PG admin 4 server so let's wait for it. Okay so it has started. Now it is saying please enter your master password now when you are starting pg admin 4 for the first time it is going to ask you for the master password and i have set mine to just 123456 again not a very safe password all right so now you can access all of your servers from this panel and i was working with my seo checklist tool that's why i have this all entitled db as well now i'm going to delete this cj flask db so let's read it and now you want to drop the database which basically means drop all the tables inside of it and now we are going to delete the flask db as well so let's delete that all right so currently we have no servers other than the default ones and this one that i had created for my other project now we can create a new server we can create new user a password a database everything from that gui however i want to show you the command line way to do it so 
when you install PG Admin 4, you will also get a separate PSQL shell with it so that you can access Postgres from command line because it is not accessible via default command line of Windows. So let's click on it. And first of all, it is going to ask you for a server. Now, if you have created a server, you can type a name for it, but mine is just a local host. So let's do that. Press enter simply, you don't need to type anything. Now, by default, you can access the Postgres database. The password for Postgres database is the default one that is set up when you first install PG Admin 4. So for now, let's type just enter. The port is, as I said, default one is 5432. Let's press enter there. Now this username, if you do not have a user created, then you can use the Postgres default user. Now the password for this user is just one, two, three, four, five, six. Now press enter and there we go. We have successfully logged in as the Postgres user. Now what we need to do first. So first of all, we are going to create a new user with a new password. So let's create that. It is very simple, just few lines of command. All right, so let's create it. So that's create user and then the username. For this one, we are going to create CJ Postgres. And then with password and now the password in quotes. All right, so let's say the password to be CJ Flask. All right, now you need to end it with a semicolon to complete the command. Now you can press enter. Now it is saying that a role has been created. So we are going to use a command slash du and that's backslash du to list out all the users that are currently inside that Postgres. So I had already created CJ Flask and now we have the CJ Postgres as well. Now currently it does not have any attributes so let's assign it so that we can create a database with it. So now let's alter that user. So alter user and then the username. So CJ Postgres. Now, first of all, we are going to make it a super user. So with super user and then semicolon. So the role has been altered. Now, after that, we are going to allow it to create a database. So alter user and then CJ Postgres with now create DB without any space. After that, semicolon, press enter. So again, the role has been altered. And now if you want this user to be able to create new users, you can also give it an attribute of create role. All right. If you don't want that, don't worry. So now access the slash du again. And now, as you can see, it is a super user and it can create database. So we are going to leave it at that. Now, after this, we are going to create a database with this new user. So we want to switch to this user. Now, how do we do that? The command to switch the user and connect to that database is again backslash C and then the database name, which is Postgres and then the username, which is CJ Postgres. Press enter. It is going to ask us the password of CJ Postgres, which is in our case CJ Flask. Press enter. And you are now connected to the database Postgres as user CJ Postgres. Now, if you create a database, then it will be inside CJ Postgres user. So let's do that now. All right, so now let's access all the database that we currently have, which is as simple as slash L and C. So I already have Postgres database and all in title DB. So how about we create a database named CJ Flask app, all right? create a database and then the database name so cj flask app and now semicolon and press enter sorry about that i tried to clear the screen and that's why it is saying syntax error let's run the command again and this time it has successfully created a database so now we are going to connect to that database so now backslash c and then the database name which is cj flask app and then the username, which is CJ Postgres, and then semicolon. So now we are connected to our CJ Flask app database with CJ Postgres user. So we have all the information that we currently need. So let's change our template here. So Postgres SQL, and then the username we typed was CJ 
postgres the password was cj flask all right the host name is localhost the port is 5432 and the database name is cj flask app all right so now if our information is correct if our configuration is correct then when we run db.createAll, it will create the database tables for us so let's try that now in our terminal we are going to access the python terminal from code jana underscore flask import db and then we are going to create the table so db.create underscore all and since we do not have any error and then just to see whether it is currently working let's also bring out that user class from code jana underscore flask dot models import that user class and then query for all information and see we have that empty list so now let's type a user and we are going to assign few values in it so i'm going to open my routes.py file so that you can see how we are doing this all right so in the similar fashion we are going to enter this information so we are instantiating our user class and then we are providing these values as arguments so first of all we need a username so let's say username is mythical all right and then we need an email email let's say myth at gmail.com and then we need a password so let's say the password is again for simplicity is password now parenthesis and now let's press enter and we do not have any error so a user has been created now we need to add this user to our database so db.session.add and add that user in the arguments press enter now db.session.commit to commit those changes and now if our information is correct then that user must be displayed so user.query.all and there we go so we have that user now let's say user is equal to user.query. let's say bring out the first information so the first user is mythical because it is the only user that we currently have so user.id yes it is working user.password it is working user.email again it is working so if we have that information in our database then by logic shouldn't we able to you know log into that account well let's see if we can i'm going to close this python terminal and now i'm going to run our python file great now let's open the page click on login now let's enter the information that we currently have so the email was myth at gmail.com and the password was password so myth at gmail.com and the password was password so let's log in and there we go we have successfully logged in as myth at gmail.com and have also been redirected to account page now suppose if we had incorrect password but correct email so myth at gmail.com but the password is let's say medusa let's click login and see the password did not match so we did not log in and we are still on the login screen so this is how you configure postgres sql with flask now there are just so many things that you need to know regarding postgres sql and those commands so make sure to check the description section of this video because i have included the commands that you are going to be needing but for now our app is working so in our next video we are going to implement a proper method to authenticate the user we are not going to use this text-based password that is clearly visible if someone gets an access to your database we are going to encrypt our password then we are going to limit some pages that are only accessible to logged in users all right so next video is going to be so much fun please do subscribe to Coachana and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.